Hi again everyone, I hope you're all doing really well. I thought I would do a follow-up video on my support.com video I made the other day regarding why the stock price was tanking following the vote on the merger with Greenwich Generation. There are two reasons for this. The first being that the stock did continue to have a turbulent journey in the markets on Monday, rising up to an intraday high of 21.91 per share or 4.4% before crashing down to finish the day at $19.10 or 9.5% percent down on the day. The second reason for this video is to explore a question that I posed in my last video about what will happen to the short positions after a merger. This is a question I believe many playing for the short squeeze are genuinely interested in as I have seen it crop up in my own and other videos comments sections around this topic and I think I can answer it with a degree of clarity. So this video is going to do two things update on the short situation heading into Tuesday's trade and unpack what will happen to the short squeeze effort following the merger. So let's get into it. So in regards to the state of the short squeeze, it is still very much intact. Despite heavy losses in trading over Friday and Monday sessions, I previously drew in this dotted line at $8, which I believe is a bit of a trigger point for where the stock short squeeze can come undone. Basically, this price point captures all the short positions that were being held before mid-August, which were clearly the targets of the short squeeze. Obviously, there are other short positions under distress at the moment, as the current share price of $19.10 catches out a lot of recently established short positions. But these newer positions are not as much the target of the squeeze effort. So purely from a chart perspective, the short squeeze play is still definitely an option. In fact, when you look at the latest short data available, support.com has actually become more potent of a short squeeze than before, despite its falling stock price and respective market cap in the last trading session. There have been dramatic developments in terms of the outstanding float currently being shorted, almost tripling since my last update, days to cover cutting right back and the borrow fee has further increased to 163.41% despite the share price coming down. This short position is crazy. To put it in perspective, over 73% of stocks, this short position is crazy. To put it in perspective, over 73% of the float is currently shorted. A massive jump from Friday, and when you consider that just under 36% of the float is available for purchase publicly, there actually is not enough stocks publicly available for every short position to cover. It is why this current short play is such a tempting one, and there is the capacity for it to go totally parabolic. Hence why it is now occupying the number one rank on the Fintel short squeeze candidate list. However, in saying all of this, since we had the big jump up in short positions from last week, Part of this would be short sellers taking advantage of what they perceive as a sliding stock price. So while the percentage of outstanding float is ridiculous at 73%, I would suspect most of those short positions would not currently be under distress. If I was to have a guess based on what the short position was last week, only about a third of the current 73% of short positions would be in distressed positions. Although this would reverse quickly if there were to be a consistent volume and upward movement in the stock price in the coming sessions. In terms of the likelihood of this upward movement returning on Tuesday, while it is not the greatest indicator for trading direction in the next session, support.com stock did slide a further 27 cents in the low volume aftermarket session. While there's not necessarily an indication for which direction the stock will trade, it might be an indication for where it may open trade on Tuesday, unless there is some crazy pre-market action, which is always possible with this stock. Looking at a few other technical indicators for which way the stock may go on Tuesday, keep in mind the dates on my charts are a little different due to my trading from Australia. We can see that on this 15 minute chart that the stock finished along the lower of the Bollinger Bands, which is usually a bouncing point unless there is to be a negative breakout. It is worth noting that there has been a decent narrowing of these bands in the final hour of trade, which can suggest a breakout could be approaching, which lends further evidence that there could be a breakout fast approaching. Based on the fact that the RSI is basically on 30 and saying the stock is oversold, you would have to expect it to be a buy driven outbreak if one does occur at open, which means we could see another jump in the stock price. In saying all of this, this is an overly inflated stock and there is every chance it could go sell at open. So this is all theoretical and not a reflection of which way the stock is going to go. So now that we have established that the short squeeze is well and truly alive, that brings us to the second question for this video. What will happen to the short positions post the merger? The reason people want to know this is, will it mean that the short positions will be forced to cover? Will they cease to exist with the new entity? Well, based on my understanding of the deal, the answers to these questions are yes, the outstanding short positions will remain 
if and when the merger is finalized. And therefore there won't be this forcing of shorts having to cover or of them disappearing altogether. What this will mean, however, is that technically while the dollar value will remain the same, there will be a downward alteration in the actual number of how many shares need to be returned by short sellers. So Greenwich is merging with support.com, but this is very much an acquisition as Greenwich is a much larger entity, hence why support.com shareholders will only make up 7.7% of the new entity or 2,998,000 shares. So this deal is technically a reverse merger, which means the corporate structure that is support.com, i.e. a publicly listed company, will be used by Greenwich to move all of their assets into and allow them to avoid the lengthier and more complex process of turning their company public. So because the support.com legal structure will still exist, so will their shares in theory, therefore outstanding obligations of those shares, aka short positions, will still exist. So to break this down a little bit mathematically, based on the 22nd of March announcement, support.com had a float of 25,701,000 shares and based on the allocation they will have in the new company, these 25 million shares will be basically subjected to a reverse stock split and become 2,988,000 shares. So what this means is if you take 2,988,000 and divide it by the 25,701,000 existing shares, you get a decimal answer of 0 0.11625877, which is the amount of the new entity that support.com shares transfer to. So every support share held will be worth 0.11625877 shares in GREE, or roughly 8.6 support shares will equate to one share in GREE. Of course, this is all subject to change, and it is worth pointing out that this was all based on what was worked out in March when the merger was first announced, and it is stated that this will likely alter in their in the footnotes of their presentation, which is at least hoped to be finalized in the third quarter of this year. There is good reason to expect change here in the sense that while the merger did increase the perceived valuation of support.com compared to their market value in March, the stock has been on a volatile but meteoric rise. Also at the same time of the announcement, Bitcoin was at record prices of over 60,000 US dollars per coin, which was what the merger projected the price to stay around. However, the price of Bitcoin did not stay that high and has in fact spent much of the time since at lower levels with the current price being 45,000 US dollars a coin, so significantly lower. So I would be expecting some changes in this proportioning of shares. By how much? Given the volatility of both support.com stock and the price of Bitcoin, it's anyone's guess. So translating this to what it means for the short positions, if you hold short positions, you would still need to cover the same dollar value when support.com becomes GREE. Theoretically, the same ratio of outstanding short positions to the size of the publicly available float, i.e. non-insider or institutional holdings in GREE, will remain the same as it currently is for support. So mathematically, this means on the surface, the nature of the short squeeze will remain the same. There is the possibility that some of the institutions may sell off parts of their shares when the merger goes through. This isn't totally uncommon. It's a way of freeing up cash. And in that event, that would change the nature of publicly available shares and potentially dilute the short squeeze situation. Anyway, that's all I have for this video. I hope you found it useful and it answered the questions that you may have had about the state of the short squeeze and what will happen to the short positions once the merger is completed. What do you guys think is going to happen to the short interest in the near future? Will it remain high or do you expect it to squeeze or collapse leading up to the merger? Let me know in the comments below. I'm really interested to hear what you guys think. It's a very interesting and complex situation. And it's also how I found the inspiration behind this video. Anyway, until next time, may the markets trade in your favor. Cheers.